Folks, good evening. My name is Diego Choa, superintendent with the Hollister School District, and I'm joined here by my coworker, coordinator of special education, Mr. Daniel Romero. Say hi, Daniel. How you doing, guys? Everybody, we're here tonight uh, to go over uh, a document that was sent to all parents. Um, I did want to explain that I am six feet away from Mr. Romero, so I am going to take off my face covering, and there are uh, other folks in the room, but we're all six feet apart from one another. So, um, so and we just had our first technical difficulty, but we won't have very many more tonight. Um, and I wanted to to basically start by saying thank you to all the parents in this community. Um, these have been very difficult times, and. Uh, many families have had to overcome obstacles in their financial life, in their personal life, uh, overcome obstacles with family members who are ill, and what to do about the fact that our campuses uh, needed to close so quickly back on the 13th of March. And so we wouldn't have arrived where we are today without parent support, and I just want to begin by thanking the parents. I also want to thank our amazing staff members. Um, I too am a parent of a child in the school district and I want to say to all of our teachers and staff out there, I appreciate you and I support you and I'm thankful for everything that you have done in the last three months to help our students. And what we're here tonight to talk about is our school's reopening draft plan. Um, and I wanted to begin by just simply uh, mentioning a document that came out today. It's called Stronger Together. It's published by the California Department of Education. And it's a lengthy document, but it is available online on the California Department of Education website. And the document talks about all of the different consideration and all of the different guidance that school districts need in order to be able to reopen schools. Um, some of the most important and the biggest highlights for that particular document is an expectation that school districts participate in something called active screening, which means any time a staff member or student comes onto our campus, we need to check to see if they have a temperature. We need to ask questions to that student or staff member about whether or not they feel ill and about whether or not they've traveled in the last 14 days and a series of other recommended questions. Another big requirement and guideline is the requirement for six feet of social distance. That is an incredibly important one because what we um, have a, a, a history of doing in, in education is of building classrooms in a way that will allow us to have somewhere between 20 and 32, 33 kids in each class. And what six feet of social distance ends up doing to a school and to a classroom is it ends up limiting the number of children you can physically have in any one uh, classroom. And so that's a very important one I wanted to discuss right off the bat um, because if we have six feet of social distance as the requirement, then we can't have 25 kids in each class. Um, and so I wanted to state that right from the outset. And then what you'll see, um, one of the main requirements of this Stronger Together plan um, put out by the California Department of Ed is the requirement that staff use face coverings. Um, so I wanted to make it clear that um, the three of the biggest components of this plan are all part of the state's guideline. Um, and at the same time, we as a school district have the responsibility to go deeper and to make really detailed plans. And I want to assure parents that tonight's event is the first of many along the way in the next three weeks that will allow us to find out what parent concerns are, to hear from our parents, and to tailor our plan so that it fits the Hollister School District, while also abiding by the guidelines and the recommendations that we're being asked to implement. So with that, I'll open it up. Um, we do, I do want to give a couple of, of uh, little reminders here. So we have the ability for parents to call in tonight. We want to encourage you to do that. Um, 
when you do so, you'll be placed in a phone calling queue. So uh, the first parent to call in is first, and from there, each parent is put in the queue. Um, Mr. Romero here to the right is going to be in charge of answering those calls and uh, relaying the information out to us so we can have a conversation tonight. But the second thing is that this is a live YouTube event, but it's also easy for you at home to just simply rewind and listen again if something if you didn't catch something or if you get distracted or if you just didn't hear something we said you can always go back and rewind and listen again and then after this is over it'll be uploaded to our YouTube page so you can watch it um, anytime afterward um, so let's get started from there um, Brandon who's our um, tech department leader here he's with me tonight he just changed the screen so you'll see now the parent town hall document um, and we're going to have that in the background. I'm going to ask him to go to the third slide, if you could, Brandon. And um, so what we have here is we've got a big visual on what this health guidance is. And we talked about it briefly, but active screening, six feet of social distance, and then staff wearing face coverings. Those are three, three big requirements, three big components. And then if we can go to the next screen. Awesome. Once kids are in school, we're going to have them wash their hands. That's a very big recommendation. We're going to have visible markings on the ground so that children will know how to stay apart from one another, especially younger children. We'll, we'll teach them and work with them to understand how to maintain social distance. Uh, and then scroll down just a little bit more. Then you'll see middle school students wearing face coverings. And one of the reasons that we have that in our plan is that our local uh, ordinance, our local requirement is that anybody over the age of 12 wear a face covering. So we're taking a combination of the guidance from the California Department of Ed and we're connecting it to our local guidance, which is 12 and above should be wearing a face covering at all times. Then if you can uh, come to the next page, we've got a brief summary here, but basically um, in order to make it so that classrooms only have a maximum of 16 kids in there at any given time. Kids will come to school two days a week and be distance learning from home three days a week. Or we do have the Hollister Rise Academy. That is a fully online program, meaning that those students would not report to their school at all. They would remain at home and they would take all their courses online and they would submit all their work online and they would have video meetings once per week with their teacher online. Okay. And then of course we have technology coming up in this school year. Um, big kudos and big um, thank you to all of our awesome technology staff, but we're prepared to ensure that every student has a Chromebook. Um, we're also going to change our policy to allow those parents who want their child to just use their own computer, laptop, or Chromebook, we want you to bring them to school next year. We're gonna allow you to do that. We'll allow you to get on our system and access all of our programs when your child is at school next year. So that's called a bring your own device option. And then the last thing, uh, we have a team of people that work with us in the technology department who are gonna help to give online access and support to students. So. When your child is home for distance learning, we have a team of employees who are paying attention to the online ticket system. So when your child is at home and has a problem with uh, some program or some aspect of their, of their Chromebook, they'll submit their ticket and one of our employees will be able to assist them virtually. So that's a really nice feature and one we feel, we feel good about going into next year. Um, this is a visual for parents that we're providing on tips for distance learning. So those parents wanting to know how can I help my child set up a dedicated and quiet space, create a routine for your child, use our programs. We have a lot of great programs in this district that are online. Eureka Math is one of them. Another is Benchmark Universe. Another is our district's YouTube channel. So watch those lessons. Have your child watch those lessons. And then always stay connected to your teacher. Use email to communicate with your teacher. And then number five is what I feel really excited about. Our district administrators, our teachers, and our district technology staff is busy preparing a series of online parent trainings 
that we plan to put in place leading up to next school year. And I feel that that's going to be a real game changer because it's going to teach parents how to support their kids at home. Um, our next uh, slide is a, is a, a very similar uh, example of tips, but this one is specifically for middle school students. So there's just a little bit more independence and I won't go over these five because they're very similar um, to the other poster, but we do have just slightly different recommendations for middle school students. So, yeah. Then of course, um, heading into the next, we have a poster just on how we plan to keep uh, our Hollister schools safe. So I wanna just run through these really quickly, but we don't wanna see handshakes. We want those non-contact greeting methods. So put those hands up in the air, wave and nice to see you, thumbs up, nice to see you. We want kids to repeatedly wash their hands. The district will be purchasing a series of portable hand washing stations that we'll have all over our campuses next year that will allow more kids to wash their hands more frequently in a way where adults can supervise and monitor that they're doing it properly. Uh, you'll see the next is disinfecting surfaces. So we'll have a regular schedule of daily cleaning going on. So you'll see custodians going through the campus, cleaning and disinfecting from seven in the morning until five in the afternoon. Um, and that will be a really, really great change for us. And then uh, we have, again, teachers and staff showing children how to avoid touching their face, covering their coughs, covering their sneezes because those droplets are one of the main ways that we um, have seen and understood that coronavirus is transmitted to other people. Um, you'll see on the right hand side we have uh, a recommendation to limit meetings. So that means those of you parents that have children with special needs will continue to want to hold meetings via Google Meet uh, or Zoom uh, to avoid face-to-face -face meetings. And then when those are not possible, when, it, when we can't hold a meeting online in that way, will hold meetings in well-ventilated rooms and spaces that are large and that can, can uh, permit social distancing. And then the last is just to suspend all non-essential travel and trips, to do online virtual trips. Um, just a little bit lower, you'll see um, one of the big recommendations, if you're not feeling well, please stay home. Please stay home. And then obviously, reach out to us with concerns about your emotional or mental well-being ask for assistance we're here to help and, and we're 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 available to do that and we're wanting to do that um, the next poster is just a big big visual super easy to understand stop the spread and if you do feel sick stay in bed do not come to school if you feel sick So with that, I think I'll open it up. Mr. Romero, you're there. Um, do we have a call yet? Do we yes, have a first we, call? we actually do have some calls. Awesome. On the way. So we'll go to the first one here. Brandon, how am I doing back there? Doing okay? All right. You can hear me? Oh, yeah. Okay. This is called Feeling Time. Hi, space. Chris. You're live. <laughs> Karen Town Hall, this is Mr. Romero. Did you have a question for us? Did you have a question for us, Chris? Very good question. So the caller wants to know what's the um, What's the plan for physical education for elementary and middle school students? Excellent question. Right now, the guidance that we've received is that if we're going to offer physical education, it needs to be done in a manner that permits social distancing. So I want, I want you to understand right now, what we typically do at our middle schools is we have somewhere between 40 and 45 kids in every PE class, and we have sometimes up to five teachers, four or five teachers teaching at the same time. So there can sometimes be up to 200 kids out on those fields. So that will be very difficult to accomplish. Even if we bring the numbers down, that's still 125 kids out in PE at the same time. One of the other questions we, we received and we included it in the uh, Parent Town Hall FAQ that we emailed to all parents 
is will my child change their clothes to go to PE class? And right now, it doesn't look like they will because if you think about those school locker rooms, they're extremely close. You have to stand like, you know, six inches away from somebody else while you, you change into your PE clothes. So I don't think that will happen. Um, but we do at this time plan to have PE just and recess, but just do so with social distancing still in place. Thank you, Dan. Okay, I'll take the next caller. So let's see here. Hi, Ms. Simpson. Uh, you are now live? Hi. Okay, so you just want clarification on that? Okay, I'll let him know. So, so she wants clarification on if you're saying there's 25 students in the classroom and only 16 are going to attend um, and they're going to rotate. So is there going to be that extra day? Um, uh, who's going to be going that day or how is that going to work? Yeah, thank you for asking that question. So, so what would happen is the reason to have school closed on Wednesdays is that we need a day in order to disinfect the campus because we have two different groups of kids coming onto campus. So part of the reason to limit the numbers is to avoid having large groups of children being in one space at any given time because of that six foot requirement. So by dividing the students, we need time to disinfect the campus in between the rotation of the two students that are, on, that are in that particular room. So on those days, our teachers will work likely work from home and our students will be all students will be home and it'll allow the school the opportunity to do a very thorough deep cleaning before two separate groups of kids are on the same campus so thank you for that question yeah okay next question okay great so it looks like we have 13 calls that's very that's really cool yeah 13 calls, so we just got through with the first two. And then as we answer more questions, we'll have more calls come in, and we can do the, the review. And um, Would Daniel be able to take the call while I, or just as, after each time? Hi, so you're live now, what, what is your question? Some good questions. So she's got a couple of questions. The first one yeah. is the bell schedules. Are they yes. going to be shorter? Right now, good question. Is the bell schedule going to be shorter? It's currently good. not expected to change very much. In order to facilitate transportation, we will have to move a couple of schools times five to ten minutes in either direction. Um, but right now, we're not planning on having a big change in, in bell schedules. Okay. And the second question is, how, do, how are we going to ensure that the bathroom is, is, is stay clean? Excellent question. So what we've had in the past is we've had each school campus has basically three custodians. So our custodians are divided and we have a morning custodian and we have two evening custodians. So something that we're currently considering is working with our employee union to potentially have all three be on campus when students are there so that we can be constantly disinfecting and cleaning and, and making sure that restrooms, sinks, doorknobs, handrails, um, all entry and, and exit points are con continually cleaned throughout the day. Thank you. Excellent questions. Good questions. Yeah. So the visual that you all have while Mr. Romero takes this call, this is an interesting Imagine one it. because it talks a little Hi, bit Mr. about, Romero. yeah, 
just how to talk to your children about coronavirus um, mm -hmm. and how to explain what's going on and what what you know what you can expect them to say and what's on their minds. And it's a, I like that visual. It's a very good, very good reminder. A very good, very good question. Just brush up on that. I'll, de I'll definitely have them clarify that. All right. Thank you. All right. So she has a student with an IEP, and she yes. wants to know um, how that's going to affect students with that, who currently have IEPs. Sure. So one of the reasons that we have Mr. Romero here, we've been meeting with our, our children uh, with special needs with their parents online for a couple of months, is that we are going to implement every child's IEP. So what that means is, in special education, every single child has their own plan. There's not one plan that we apply to all 800 children who have special needs. So child A will have their individual plan implemented for them in the same way that child B or child C. Um, and the focus of our, of our implementation of the plan will be making sure that their academic goals, that their behavioral goals, and that their health and safety is being addressed. Um, will that mean that they'll attend on a rotational schedule like the other students on campus? Very likely. That's what we're currently looking at is that, again, is it possible to have individuals separated six feet or more? That is the one criteria that we have to abide by under the present circumstances. If that were to change, if that were to go down to five feet or four feet, it is possible that we could have more, if not all, students on campus the whole week. Thank you. And we're definitely going to have also uh, team meetings with the, with the families also, uh, with students with IEP. So we'll definitely be in touch with you guys regarding that. We want to make sure we implement it correctly. OK, we got some more questions. Yeah, go for it. As soon as we have one, then we'll just go right into the next one. You can just whisper and I'll, I'll project loud. Um, and then, Brandon, could you scroll down just a little bit so we can see the other part of the flyer? There it is. So focus on what they can do to keep safe. Um, and talk to them about coronavirus. Hello? Explain what it is. Hi, Lee. Stick to your routines. Great recommendations. Hello? Yeah. Hi, Lee. We are now live. Uh So that's a very good question. Two very good questions. All right. Thank you. So we'll, we'll have them answered. Mm -hmm. So she wants to know if there's resources for parents uh, now that, you know, working parents that their, their student is not going to be in school every day like uh, normal. Mm -hmm. um, and she's also asking, uh, is there a possibility that we would go to a regular uh, uh, school schedule um, sometime yes. next year? Yes. And we would. So let me answer both. So the first is absolutely. You will have resources from our district. So it's very likely when kids come home for those three days, they'll have homework, they'll have activities, they'll have books to read, they'll have assignments to do, they'll be able to watch YouTube videos, they'll be able to access uh, our core curriculum in our district, Eureka Math, Benchmark Universe, Footsteps of Brilliance, Collections, uh, ELA for Middle School. Uh, these are our are programs that are available online. So you'll be able to help your child go through and review those and, and read those, and it'll be a really, really helpful process for your child this year. And then here's the big thing. If the guidelines change and we are able to have more children on campus, I won't speak for the school board, but I will speak as the superintendent. I will strongly recommend that we bring children back on campus as much as possible using the safety guidelines that we know exist. So the hard part for parents is to understand that currently we've developed a draft plan that's based on the guidelines that are being given to us. If those guidelines change, we will sit back down again as a group 
and talk about how to get kids on campus more, learning face to face with their with their classmates and with their teacher. Thank you. Excellent question. Hi, Adrian. Hello. Hi, Adrian. This is your live. Well, it's 5.30 somehow. I thought for sure it was about 5.05 or 5.07. I know. <laughs> but somehow it's managed to be 5.30 all of a sudden. Yeah. All right, let's, there we go, Mr. Romero, okay. what do you got? We have a couple of questions. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear them. What is the timeline for school reopening? Yep. And uh, all, all students be screened or, yes. or just teachers? Everyone. Every single person coming onto our campus will be screened. And number two, what is the timeline? We're opening August 17th, that's the first day of school, August 17th, 2020. And as that, I finish up here, Mr. Romero is going to start calling the next person. Um, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Brandon Johnson, is going to be sending an email to parents uh, with answers to the frequently asked questions uh, that we're going through tonight. Okay. I'll ask that question in just a minute. I just want to kind of wait for him to finish up on this call. I'll ask him that. Yeah, yeah, and then I'll just read them all to you. Okay, very good questions. I'll, I'll ask Mr. Rachel. Thank you. So free lunch for, uh, are you talking about summer, through summer, or throughout the whole next school year? Through school year, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Those are your questions? Okay, thank you. Bye. Okay, so you have three questions here. All right, three questions. So for a family who has multiple students yes. in a, attending a school, yes. uh, will they be able to be scheduled so they attend the same days? Yes, the district will do everything we can to make sure that all students in the same family go to school on the same days. Okay. Well, um, free lunch will be provided through the school year next year. Yes, absolutely. We're, as you know, the district is continuing to feed all of our children all summer long. So even next week, the week after, the week after that, all of July, all of August, we are serving children food all summer long. As soon as we come back to campus again, we'll continue to feed breakfast and lunch to every student in the district every day. Okay, and then with families with uh, two uh, working parents, would we continue to uh, uh, collaborate with after-school programs? Um, so our after-school programs will have a very similar set of um, requirements, and once we meet with our after-school program staff and ensure that those requirements are being met, um, that should happen here in the next two to three school uh, weeks. Then we'll have a plan to be able to Hi, operate our after school programs uh, next year as well. Thank hey, you for that. What is your question? Uh, one minor update. Yes. So for school breakfast, we may decide to send the breakfast home with the child so the child can eat their breakfast at your home to avoid having that morning service and the ki children congregating to eat breakfast at home. Okay. So thank you for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Okay. Okay. Okay, well, we'll definitely, okay. 
We're all very lucky to have Mr. Romero. He's a very nice person, as you can tell. He's got excellent phone etiquette. He's over there taking care of business. Doing a great job tonight. All right, I see him writing feverishly. He's got another question on there. Uh, how many calls do we still have in the queue, Brendan? We're able to monitor how many calls are coming in, how many calls are going out. So we have another 20 phone calls, and we're going to continue to work through the list and continue to get, get these phone calls on the air. All right. I'm ready for you, Mr. Romero. I will ask our parents when so, you call so in. Let me ask them one question. We can answer one of your okay. questions, okay? So, yeah. is that is that all your questions, or yeah. do? You, oh, you have two more. Okay, so let me get them started so you can answer some of your questions. So, um, yeah. Okay. All right. So what? So she's got several questions. Okay. She said. Yeah. Huh? Well, let's see here. Um, Okay, very good question. I have a couple more questions coming in. I'm excited okay. to see those questions. Mr. Romero is going to give me one here. If you hand me the paper, I can read it. Mr. Romero, if you want to write it on the paper and give it to me. She, she wants to be able to hear it when I, when I answer the question. Uh -huh. so she, <laughs> okay. <laughs> she says, sorry, she, she just has trouble multitasking that way. Gotcha, <laughs> gotcha. Okay, we're going to work with you. We're here with you. Well, yeah, we're working with you. All right. <laughs> Okay, so, awesome. so work. Um, work so work as you're to watching this online at home, if you go into the description of this of this uh, this meeting, this online uh, town hall, there's now a link to the document that has answers to about 50 questions. So from the morning until about 3 p.m. today, we got a series of questions. We've put it in a chart. We've kind of organized it by type of question. And then we've got answers to those questions. So that is out to parents. You're welcome. Yes. Okay. During this so meeting, I will, I'll relay that message. message. Okay. Thank you so much for your questions. All right. We've got the questions. Thank you. I'm Goodbye. excited now, Mr. Romero. Okay. Yeah. So we got some questions here. All right. So the first one is there's an eighth grade student with an IEP. Yes. Um, the parent is concerned about um, how would we uh, communicate that so that the student is understands about the face mask, yeah. about wearing it, and why yeah. the importance we, of it. Two things we would teach every day. We would teach using a face covering every day. We would reinforce it. We would, we would praise children in a way that they need to be recognized and praised. For some children who have very severe and special needs, they need that reinforcement. They need that model. We would show them how to do it. Uh, and then all other children on campus is signs in every classroom, signs that, that remind us all of the importance of it, and then repeated uh, teaching of how to do it. Okay, and we'll definitely provide a visual supports too in the classroom. I hope we can force that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the next one is, uh, what is the expectation for the Rice program, and how how much time they would have to be on on online? Oh, excellent question. Go ahead and start taking the next call, and I'll answer this one for you. So, uh, excellent question about Rise. So, one of the things that's important to understand about Rise is that it's all fully online at home, but we don't want children on a computer eight hours a day doing homework. So when you sign up for the RISE, the Halls to RISE Pro Academy, what will happen is you'll session. sign up for a time slot. So you'll have you the morning questions. time slot, the middle of the day time slot, or the afternoon time mm -hmm. slot. So it'll be about three hours a day that we'll ask your student mm -hmm. to be online. And then the rest of the time will be your child doing PE okay. at home, doing okay. art assignments yeah, at home, that. or doing uh, more hands-on type of activities in the home. Yeah. All right, and then we have Mr. Romero. He's back over here, and he's getting the next call in. All right, so one of the things that we're going to do right this minute, right while this is happening, is uh, Brandon is going to help me here. He's going to put on YouTube chat, because we do have some chat questions.
questions and some online chat comments. And while Mr. Romero is taking the phone call from the next parent, I'm going to read those chat questions and I'll answer those chat questions so we don't so have the, to get the testing. Time. Just to clarify, so the testing is uh, the tests that are given in school. And I'll try to be very polite and not be super loud while he's talking to the parents. So then we'll do both at the same time. Uh -huh. And for those parents at home, we do have 380. So, so leniency as in concurrent the, viewers. Mm -hmm. Is that okay. Yeah. okay? And still about 20 callers in the system. Okay. That's great. All right. Okay. Yeah. And it's 540. Somebody's just. Um, that that's a very good question. I'll ask her. I will ask parents, okay. those of you okay. online, okay, thank you, on Ashley. hold, be as brief as possible so we can continue to get through more questions. Okay. Mr. Romero. So we have six questions here. All right. So the first one is um, if a student is at HDLA yes. and they decide to do, do the RISE program because yes. of health concerns, yep. will they lose their spot in HDLA? No. What will happen is if they choose to do the RISE program, they'll be in the Hollister RISE Academy and they'll take all their courses in that way. But we won't bring another student and place them in the Hollister Dual Language Academy. So that their seat is still available to them at the Dual Language Academy. Will HDLA do um, long distance learning? No, um, HDLA will operate in the same way that all schools operate, which is we'll have at present under this plan, two days of in-school instruction, three days of distance learning and it'll operate in the same way as the other nine schools in the district. So under this new model that students would be have three days off, yes. uh, with the student going to um, going to uh, after school care, um, daycare, uh, how, much, how much of the workload will they be getting those three days? Yeah, excellent question. While they're um, doing distance learning at home or in their daycare setting, they would have a substantial amount of work and reading and requirement for them to continue to move forward in their learning. So these are not days off. These are school days, but they're school days happening in their home. Um, and what we'll do next year is we'll have very, very clear expectations, very, very unified requirements for all students uh, and what they're expected to do at home uh, when they're not in school next year. How are we uh, going to be doing recess next year? Uh, we'll social distance. Kids will get outside and kids will play but you won't have the kind of play and the kind of games that have happened in the past because of social distancing. So kids will get sunshine, kids will be outside with their friends, but we'll teach them games that they can play that involve social distance. Okay. Uh, testing, would uh, we be canceling testing again next year? We're not sure, excellent question. This year, the state of California chose to cancel state testing. Um, that's really up to the state of California. I can tell you in our district, we will absolutely be checking to see if kids are learning. So we will give tests because we want to be accountable for whether or not students are learning. And when we see that students are falling behind, we want to adjust and we want to support those students. Okay. Uh, student readiness with the school closure, um, the parent is concerned about their student being um, behind um, in their learning. What suggestions do you have? Um, Go back into those documents that we gave you at the very beginning of this process. Every single family received a distance learning recommended activities. It was a big calendar, and in those recommendations, there are a, a ton of resources, online resources that you can access this summer in order to have your child continue to make progress and support your child as they're moving along in that, in that program. Uh, social distancing in the classroom, um, how would we expect students to stay away from each other? And um, how, how do we prepare students mentally to, so that they're not concerned with um, you know, being afraid of one another after from telling them to stay away? Yeah. Well, I think we want to educate kids about what the, what the right way to do social distancing. You know, we want kids to understand why it's important to remain six feet away from somebody else. Um, but I also believe that children have a very Hello, pure and simple this way of uh, connecting with their, with their friends. And when they see them at school, I think they'll be excited to see their friends at school. 
and we'll teach them how to play games so that when they come to school, they look forward to seeing their friends and they look forward to having fun. Yes. They will be different than last year, but we'll work hard to make children, every child, feel comfortable okay. at school and okay. feel connected at school. Um, so that's, that's so a big you got an email for from somebody here? Um, okay. Okay, I would let him know. So, well, I'm sorry, what was the first question again? You, you, uh, you're breaking up. Okay, good question. Thank you. All right. Okay. So, the first question is Will elementary ban continue? Our, our current plan is that all of our programs continue. So, elementary ban is absolutely one of those programs. Um, but we have to think about and we have to ensure that it can happen implementing social distancing. So is it going to be exactly the same? No, because in prior years it was more common to have the kids really close to each other playing right next to one another. That can't happen this year. So we have to figure out a way to be able to space children out and to be able to continue with that program. And the next question is, they just want clarification on the uh, students that age the LA mm -hmm. and they would lose their spot because uh, they got an email no. saying they would lose their spot if they would go to the rise. No. I want to see that email. Send me that email. Send me that email. But again, we're not going to take a spot away from a child who is in HDLA and give the spot to another teacher, to another student. That won't happen. Here, while Mr. Romero takes the call, it is will there be a period the child has to stick to a given schedule? And the answer is yes, absolutely. We want children to be able to follow the schedule that we provide. We want them in the classes that we we assign them to, um, and we'll have those schedules available for all of our all of our students in every class. Okay. And then we've got. Okay. What are the expectations for students in special classes? My child is autistic. Well, I'm sitting here with one of my coordinators, the that not. but the two biggest things are consistency okay. and structure. We will make sure when the children are with us, and even when they're at home, consistency in their learning, structure for their learning, and then most of all, protecting the health and safety okay, of so the child. Okay, so you're talking about the RICE program? Then I've got can we just have kids in school five okay. days a week? Okay. The answer is um, not me, right now. Oh, As a me. reason is that Good we're questions. being required is to have six feet okay. of social Thank distance you. between Bye. all children. So that just doesn't allow us to do it. And Mr. Romero, there you are, ready. <laughs> okay, so um, they want to know if, uh, if the, you know, with the schedule A or B, uh, would they be able to choose uh, the schedule? And uh, when will they know what the schedule what their child will be since uh, so they can let their employers know yep. excellent question so the first part of this is the answer is we have to adopt a plan we won't be ready to do so until June 23rd our target date to adopt a plan is June 23rd once that's in place we will have all of the information we need to be able to begin assigning students to different schedules and we'll give ourselves a couple of weeks to be able to tell parents your child is expected to be on this schedule please let me know if that doesn't work for you because we have to work with parents who are requesting a change from group a which is monday and tuesday and group b which is thursday and friday so we're gonna have to tell parents really soon um, i would say at the very latest date that we would tell parents would be july july 6th i, I believe that's a monday is the date that we have circled on our calendar um, and that will allow us to have some flexibility to give us a few weeks to iron out issues um, we do a pretty good job of knowing who everybody's siblings are but every once in a while we get a little surprised because there's children at different schools and the last name is not is not the same and so sometimes there's there's a couple of little instances uh, like that and so um, by giving out that information on July 6th, it'll give parents until the first day of school, which is August 17th, in order to be able to, to communicate with us and request any change. Okay. Yeah. What is the difference between homeschool and the new RISE program? There are a lot of differences. Um, the first and foremost difference is that if you are enrolled in the Hollister RISE program, 
Uh, you are a student of the Hollister School District. You are attending our district. You have the resources of our district. You have the support from our district. So through the Hollister Rise Academy, every child will be provided a Chromebook. Every child will be provided access to the core content that we give all of our students. So the same textbook that children receive in class will be the same textbook your child has at home. If they're in the Hollister Rise Academy, they have a dedicated supervising teacher that meets with them once per week to give support and assistance. And then we have all of our technology staff in the district that's available to help your child in uh, the Hollister Rise Academy if they're home and doing home learning. Um, Homeschooling is separate in that it is not part of the school district's program. So it's incumbent on the parent to find a homeschooling uh, curriculum and a homeschooling program. Um, and it would require a lot more, um, I would say just independence on the parent part and independence on the student's part. That won't necessarily be the same for Hollister Rise Academy. Okay, next question. Um, will teachers be uh, checking in with students during the three days off? The teachers will be home, working from home on those non-school Wednesdays. So on those non-school Wednesdays, we'll develop some activities, some emails, some checking of, of uh, student assignments to, to make sure that kids have somebody monitoring okay. their work on those days. Um, but on the other two days, they'll be in class teaching, question? so they won't be okay. yes. contacting students on those other non-school uh, days for each other. And while he takes that question, uh, on our phone, I do have a question here. Homeschooling does not work for my child. What's the difference if my kid is in school two days oh, versus so five days? It's not Again, loud the main difference here is it's two. It's too loud on the, on the screen. In order to have six feet of social distance, we can't have all students attend school every day. That's, that's one of the biggest inhibitors of us being able to have all our kids on campus. If that were to change, if that were to come down to five or four, then we could have a much greater number of kids in our classrooms and on okay. our campuses. All right, so is that your only question? All right. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, very good question. Okay. So, show is busing. How are we implementing busing? We will be picking kids up and dropping them off at school, um, and we will social distance on buses. So, our plan is to have children um, sit one per row. That was part of and maintain social distance from one another. Um, and we plan to have that in place for next school year. Okay, so your concern is? The socialization of the, of the little, little kids, right? Staff here was telling me I can look at the questions here on this phone because they've been handing me these lavender sticky notes but through the wonder of internet technology so it's more of a comment i can have the questions on this phone All right. that to him uh question is this new school schedule going to last the entire year okay. if we're required to have six feet of social distance we can't have more than 16 okay. kids in this class if that changes then we can have more students on campus so uh, Colin wants to know how are we going to implement social, socialization uh, for, yeah. fourth, for the fourth graders and under because they need that, um, yeah. you know, for yeah, of being. Of course. Um, when our children are on campus, we will do everything we can to engage them, to learn with their friends, to talk to their neighbors, to participate in class activities. But we'll do it all social distancing. Um, here at the district office and, and on our sites, um, we have had many, many meetings online and many meetings in person. And for a time there, there was about a two week time period where we didn't really see each other hardly at all. And it was, it was difficult. It was difficult to feel isolated in that way. So we're excited that we're gonna be bringing kids back to Thank campus. Thank you, I'll ask them right now. When they come back in campus, 
We believe no that the socialization will start immediately. The minute they're on campus, to be able to see their friend and talk to their friend, we're excited about that opportunity coming to us. Okay, and then also one of the things we're gonna be doing in our district is that we're implementing uh, the social emotional piece to the, to the, uh, yeah. in the classroom too. Yeah. The district will be implementing a, a district-wide curriculum for social emotional learning, so we're excited about that. The district is also going to continue with capturing kids' hearts strategies. As you all know, uh, six of our school sites were named National Demonstration Schools, um, a huge honor for a school district. The only uh, honor in, in, uh, in, the district, um, in the district's history to be recognized in that way for the social emotional side of what we do uh, for our students. So our last call, we'd also like to know um, for you to just kind of um, clarify the busing, how that's going to work, and how are we going to separate the students? Just students will sit one student per row. So as we enter them onto the bus, we'll ensure that they're seated in a row that does not conflict with another student's row. When the next student comes on the bus, I we'll take just that you. little bit more time to make sure that they sit in the row they're supposed to sit in, and we'll instruct students to remain socially distanced the entire time. Um, then we have two more questions here. The text on that cell phone was just a little too small. I didn't want to misread it. Is this plan for the high school too? No, this plan is not for the high school. This plan is for the Hollister School District, which is the K-8 schools uh, in our district. TK. TK through 8th grade. Would it be possible to have students at home Zoom into the classroom? This way, students could have instruction five days a week. That's an excellent question. Actually, we've received uh, uh, notices from some teachers asking that question. Um, and we're definitely looking into that. But the one concern that I want to put out there is we just have to make sure we retain the privacy of the students in class. So we want to avoid broadcasting our children online but if there were a situation where the teacher would want to do things online each day when their other students are home we would absolutely okay, welcome it and, and it would be a one your question okay thank you thank you Bye. okay so we have some more questions yes uh, so the YMCA so we, we talked about how they uh, they're going to be, uh, we're still going to be collaborating with them. Will they also be yes. collaborating uh, the, those during those three days off that the students will have since the parents are going to be working? So I think what you're asking me is, will YMCA provide childcare when kids are not in school? And I don't know the answer to that question for YMCA. I won't speak for them, but here's one thing I want to put out there. Part of the reason that we have half of our students home is to comply with social distancing. So we can't bring the other half onto our campus on those days because then we won't comply with social distancing. So I want to make sure that parents understand one of the main drivers in this whole draft plan is complying with six feet of social distancing. So YMCA can support in the same way that we did last year, which is after school in our classrooms and in our facilities, but not if we can't social distance. Okay. Next question, custodial staff. So you mentioned that uh, during the first group, Monday and Tuesday, and then we have that Wednesday for cleanup for the next group to come in. Now, is custodial staff gonna be coming in uh, on the weekend to clean for the second group? Um, good question. So when the custodial staff leaves on um, Friday, there was always an overlap at the end of a, of a Friday and at the beginning of a Monday. In addition, there's uh, there's a time frame, it's 50 hours maybe, just a little bit over 50 hours, of when the, no students or staff have been on campus. So we have a couple of options. One is to use a product on those Fridays that disinfects all of the um, the desks, all of the classroom, the common spaces, um, and then when students return uh, Monday morning, that? the classroom has been disinfected. If you go to a rice program and then come back, or just to clarify that. I have a question on who makes the criteria for how the school opens, question mark. Um, it's a combination of a couple of different things. So the California Department of Education is giving oh, guidelines okay. for it's all okay. districts to follow. Okay. In addition to that, the California Department of Education will set up the rules 
for how we take attendance, for how students get their instruction, and for compliance with uh, the education okay. code. But in okay. addition to that, so our local public work. health okay. officials Thank you. are responsible okay. for determining how we implement these local decisions. So face coverings, as an example, in San Benito County are currently required for 12 years and above. The state's guidance does not require that. It recommends it, but locally, it's required by San Benito County Public Health. So we're gonna follow the local recommendation because it's more restrictive than the state's recommendations. So we have some more questions um, regarding uh, the screening. So if a student goes on the bus, um, will the student be screened prior to loading the bus? That's um, our plan, yes. Okay. That's our yeah. plan. And then we have a couple of HDLA questions. Uh, yeah. The first one, how is HDLA gonna work? Um, you know, during the during the RISE program or homeschooling, and um, how is the Spanish portion of it going to work during long distances? Yes. Long Thank you for that. So, if students are attending the Hollister RISE Academy, they won't be receiving instruction in English and Spanish. They'll be receiving instruction in English only. If students are on campus and doing the rotational attendance, two days at school, three days at home, then those students will be a part of the Hollister Dual Language Academy in the same way that they were this year. It will change because normally you have five full days of school. So that will obviously change because they'll be in school two days a week as opposed to five days a week. And then their home activities will be balanced with the work that they've been doing. All right. Good, thank you. Question, how do we enroll in the RISE program? Are there any requirements? Excellent questions. We will send a detailed email to all parents this Friday regarding how to enroll in the RISE program. The requirement for the RISE program is the following. Number one, understand what you are agreeing to do. You are agreeing to have your child in online learning the whole year. You're agreeing that online learning will work for your child request and that you can commit to supporting your child at home. Um, and then from there, submit the application process. So that's, those are the requirements for the RISE program. Here's a question. If a student is ill on the day they're supposed to be distance learning, is that considered an absence? Oh, I don't know. Okay. I Thank don't you. know. I'm going to have to ask that question. That's an excellent question. So we're going to tag this one here because we're going to come back to this and circle back and send out a uh, include this in our next FAQ. Okay, you got a couple of good questions here. So if the hybrid program is not working for a child or the RICE program, uh, would they be able to uh, swap vice versa, you know, if it's one of the programs not working? That's an excellent question. What I would say is I would speak to you as a parent myself and speak to you as a 22-year educator. These things take time. You know, when we start the school year, Enrolling in the Hollister Rise Academy is going to feel different. It's going to feel funny. Um, what I am absolutely confident about is that the Hollister Rise Academy will be a big success for children. But there are components that every family has to put in place Hi, in order for it to succeed. Good, thank you. Would it be possible for a, a child to leave, let's say, after 10 weeks? 10 weeks in the Hollister Rise Academy and it's not working, would it be possible to return to a campus? Absolutely. But it's based on space availability. So it wouldn't necessarily be back to the teacher that they thought they were going to have. Two days for assignments? Because that space may not exist at that time. Um, having said that, we want to give parents options. So if the Hollister Rise Academy isn't working after six weeks, we would say, okay. Let's give it another two weeks. Let's try a couple of things differently. Let's work with your master okay. teacher to help you with this program. Okay, that sounds good. I'll ask him that. Is that your only question? Next question, do we Thank have you. an option between RISE and going to school? Yes, you do. Every parent will have the opportunity to select hybrid, two days a week, three days at home, or fully online. All right, another question. Uh, with the challenge of a parent working from home or working, will the students have flexible due dates for assignments? 
Um, that's a good question. I think it would depend on the assignment, but I, I also want children to have that, that feeling of confidence and that feeling of purpose, knowing today is Wednesday, my teacher told me to do these assignments today, my teacher told me to read and, and write a summary of what I read after 30 minutes today and submit it to Google Classroom. So I think certain things we want kids to do them on those days. Um, and then if a child isn't feeling well, we would use the same criteria that we do when regular school is in place, which is if they're out for a day, we give them an extra day to submit. Yeah. Excellent question. Okay. So I currently take care of another child. Would I be able to request to be placed in the same as my other two other children? Right. So we'll reach out to every family and let families know you are presently scheduled for group A or group B. And every family will have the opportunity to reach out and, and request an adjustment to those things. So that is something we're doing. We would always recommend that those students who are family members would be those first uh, adjustments that we would make. Uh, and then from there, we would just move forward. Yeah. And somebody just told me it's 6.05, okay. And I do have a question here, which is, are all public schools statewide implementing these new standards? The answer is yes. Every school district in the state of California is currently trying to figure out how to open their campuses, how to socially distance kids, how to check temperatures for students every day. All of this is being worked out. I would say with Hollister, okay, so we're, just to clarify your question, so we're maybe a little bit with three days, more of bringing in trial, ideas um, and, and having an event like tonight a little bit sooner, but we felt like our school board has a couple of weeks to have this process develop, and it gives us a couple of weeks to meet with parents, to have an event like tonight, take questions, and then be able to meet with our school site councils, meet with our employees again, and continue to plan as we move forward to um, opening schools next year. And I have, what do you mean by active testing? Active testing means For the three days using a right? non-contact okay. temperature meter to okay. check the temperature of children. Okay. That's what active testing means. So we have another question. A uh, so, uh, parent has a concern. Uh, the st student has an IEP, yes. and she is concerned with the three days that he, he might be off, um, who will help support with uh, OT, with speech, with help, with support. Um, what do you recommend? I mean, she's going to have to find daycare for her child. So uh, how do we support that student? Well, here's the first, the simplest way to explain this. We will implement every child's IEP. The IEP is intact whether it's taking place through distance learning right. or face to face. Right. Do you have a question? Another question here Will masks be required during recess? Currently, we don't have in our recommended plan any TK through fifth grade face coverings. Okay. So for those children, face coverings would not be required. For our 6th, 7th, and 8th graders, the current plan, based on the local so requirement of ages question. 12 and no, above, they, they our time. plan is to have those children wearing face they, coverings they, the entire time, including recess. The new 6th grade program? <clears throat> question, are schools going to be open or be open sometimes and closed sometimes? Um, I think what this question is saying is what will happen on those Wednesdays, campus will be closed on those Wednesdays so we can clean the campus. Oh, okay. I'll ask. That's a good question. Next question. When will registration for next year happen? Now. Registration is happening now. Get to your school sites. We have this wonderful program with these boxes outside of every school office. You walk up to the school, you knock on the door, they give you the registration paperwork. Take it home and fill it out, come back and Thank drop it right in that box. Or go online and print the materials at home yourself. So Romero. Okay, so if a student uh, just got accepted to the Zad Lane sixth grade class and they choose to, choose to go to the RICE program, will they lose their spot? No. No, because what we have in place right now is we have every, every child that has requested, has received, and 
we're not going to take spots away from students and give them to other students. Okay, next question, uh, how does the Rice program work? Is it, the, its own, is it its own program or is it based by school? The Hollister Rise Academy is a district-wide program no matter what school your child attends. Next question is, is Hollister Rise Academy bilingual or English only? Hollister Rise Academy is English only. Question, how do you support a student whose parents work full time and are not available to help with Zoom meetings, setups, etc. Excellent questions. Right now, we haven't seen our, kid, our students in three months. But guess what we're going to be able to do come August 17th? We'll be able to teach your children at school, train them how to log into their Google Meets. When you give them to me, will you put them over here? Oh, you don't want to be on camera. Um, so are you talking about? So what program? it will allow us to do is it will allow us to show them the how program? to access Google Meets okay, and so Zoom meetings, that. so that when they're home, okay. they're right. able to do right. so themselves. No problem. The other part of it is we have technology staff that's available virtually to help children who are at home with accessing the internet. And then the other thing that we're real proud of and real excited about is the district was able to uh, to purchase over uh, a thousand district uh, Wi-Fi hotspots that we will be assigning to children and families that need access to high-speed internet. And every single student next year will have a, a device that's either their own from home or a device that we give the child uh, so that those barriers are taken away. So, if, uh, so they wanted just a, a couple of clarifying questions. So for the hybrid program, is that gonna be a full day? Or is that currently the schedule for hybrid is expected to stay pretty close to what it is now? And and another uh, clarifying question for a student that goes to HDLA, so they would still be receiving English and the Spanish, right? During, that's that's during the current plan. plan. Absolutely. Question: Is the attendance policy changing? Yes. We can't tell you exactly how yet, uh, because the state of California needs to give us that direction. But we know and we expect the policies for attendance to change. Then I have here, will there be barriers or sneeze guards around students' desks? I've seen some models of classrooms with plastic curtains around the desks in other okay. states. We're not, we're not all the way to that point of the plan yet. Um, we don't know how much that would help in the sense of if we're already six feet socially distanced, um, I think it's important to okay. allow children to see each other and to see their teacher. So I would really kind of hold back on kids having something in their way so, that would stop them from seeing their, their classmates. The other so issue is how, right? it's difficult for children okay. to so hear just, each other just, and to just hear to their teacher so if we have to know these sneeze guards how, how, um, throughout the course. How are parents expected to, uh, uh, to find daycare for three days and how, how the students will be getting help for those three days, right? Question, will students be okay. forced to wear an N95 mask? Okay. No, so the current the guidance okay. is for okay, cloth face coverings. So that's what we'll recommend. The district also purchased a very large stockpile and got a, a large stockpile of face coverings that we have on hand that will be able to last us throughout the year for all of our students who forget their face covering or, or show up to school and don't have a face covering. Okay, so the next question is a kind of two part uh, yeah. question. It's the how, right? How are our parents uh, supposed to uh, work full time when their, their students is uh, out of school? Um, how, how are they expected to provide daycare and help for, for those students during the time that they're off? So let me, let me answer the first part. At this point in time, because of the requirement of having six feet of social distance, we are unable to have all of our students on campus. That, I want to really make that clear to families. If it were less, if it were four feet of social distance, if that were to change, it would make a huge difference in terms of how many kids can be on campus and how many days they can be on campus. Right now, working During with the guidelines we have. For summer. It's a rotational attendance. Uh, I think a lot of parents struggle figuring out how to arrange for childcare and how to arrange for 
um, daycare for the younger children. That's a good question. Um, and, and that will be related. a conversation that our community needs to work together to solve. I do have a question. Let us sign a waiver for our kids no to problem. go to school. Thank you. No and problem. those that don't want it can homeschool. At this point in time, we can't do that. Um, we're not allowed to um, to in, enlist or put in place a program like that. And, and so that's the reason we're having these meetings to talk about the district's draft plan and to work through and finding solutions. Um, but we do have to comply with those requirements and recommendations. Okay. Uh, next question is PE for students in elementary schools. How is that going to work? Um, our, our plan is to continue to have children participate in a way that facilitates social distancing. So PE is a, is a common one where children are really close to each other, children are playing with each other, they're sometimes running into each other, um, and, and they're sharing activities and they're sharing uh, equipment, and we won't be able to do those things next year. Based on the current guidelines, we'll have to teach them games and activities that allow us to continue to social distance, and we very much plan to do so. When school opens, will students have access to the library? The one caveat, the answer is yes. When schools open, our libraries will open. But the one change and the one difference is we can't have shared materials. So we wouldn't have the same kind of library okay, visitation. You. We would do more to okay. allow kids to choose books um, online and to have those books ready for them when they visit the library or the books taken to their classroom from the library. So we want kids to continue to have their weekly uh, library time, but it will need to look different because of social distancing. Okay. Um, question, how much parent involvement will be required to help the students okay. get their work so, done? Okay, just to clarify, I think it's a matter of setting up a routine. Mask for students. Um, if you have a routine and your child knows the routine and you check the routine okay. every day, okay. I think, your child is going to have a step ahead, getting their work done, making sure their work is being monitored. I have a question here. My child has a 504 plan. How will the previous plan be implemented during the other three days a week? My child will not physically be in school during the school year. So the 504 plan in some ways will operate similarly to the IEP. Um, our focus will be to make sure that on the days that your child is home, your child has the help that they need. Um, it will obviously be much different than it would be if your child was in school five days a week, but we plan to meet with site administrators and parents to look at those 504 plans and make sure that they work for children in the distance learning okay, so, so as well as in the face-to-face -face learning. Be home and listen. Then I have two life, more questions. Life, uh, life lesson. Will grading be the same as this year? I think it will look very similar. I think it will look very, very similar. It will, the part that will be different is when, when uh, in a typical school year, the teacher can check the work every day, five, six times a day. Now it will be different because it will be um, taking place during um, distance learning um, and one of the things that we okay. expect will happen is teachers on those Wednesdays they will be reviewing work they will be um, okay. All right. That's a very good checking question. on the okay. progress of, of students and the work that's being submitted. Okay so some, some very good questions so um, they're asking uh, we know we talked about face mask um, would a student have an option to wear a clear vinyl mask? Yes Currently, we have that option. Uh, there are many. There will actually be many students that need that. Um, the district will purchase those clear face shields, they call them, and we'll provide them. Um, and then also, we want to encourage families that want to select their own and be able to have those um, to send their children with those uh, face coverings as well. Okay. And the next question is, why can't the student just attend school from home and listen to a live lecture? Yeah and just uh, have a complete, um, instead of watching the, just these pre-recorded uh, lectures? Yeah. That's a very good question. There, there are a couple of different sticky, tangly, messy reasons for why that would, would be a problem. One is we have a, a big responsibility to maintain the privacy of all of our students. Hi, Brian. So 
if we're broadcasting in this in this instance, I'm I'm holding an online YouTube uh, parent town hall, but the only two people you see are Mr. Romero and myself. But at the same time, if I were teaching, I would have 15 kids behind me. So we can't so broadcast children question. in that way. So you're, well, but we to have had a handful of instances right where a teacher right said, "Would it be possible for me to connect?" For an example, every morning our teachers are in the, in the routine of having a class meeting. They hold uh, very similar to the Capturing Kids Hearts program. And they want to be able to do that for the kids who are home too. I mean, if that is being done where only the teacher, the video is connected, then yes, that would absolutely be possible. Um, so that's the, that's the primary concern. Then we have, will students be given packets to complete at home, or will it be online work? That's an excellent question, and the answer is, it may be both. Depending on the age of the child, written work may be preferable, depending on the subject, so, oh, so the pencil paperwork okay. may be preferable. And so we'll make sure that that's available and a possibility. Um, second is, are online teachers helping them with their class work? So I think if this is referring to the RISE Academy, the RISE Academy will absolutely have teacher support for students okay, so online. Okay, about the subs, right? On the teacher side, when it's a hybrid program, students will come to school Monday and Tuesday. As they're leaving campus Tuesday afternoon, they'll have with them the assignments for the next three days. They'll go online on Benchmark, Advance, Eureka Math, Footsteps of Brilliance, uh, Sanford Harmony, uh, Social Emotional Learning Program, and they'll have assignments and work to do so you're, uh, on all of those online okay, classes. So you're, you're concerned about the, the that is absolutely going to be offered to every child, right? Okay. Question: Will there be oversight of the at-home work issue, yes. And here's what's really great about opening up and bringing kids back onto campus. Right now, the children are all learning from home, doing distance learning, but they haven't seen their teachers in three months. Next school year, they will see their teachers every week, and that face-to-face -face accountability is very important. And it's going to help us next year have a much better, uh, much better monitoring, much better accountability for what kids are doing online. All right, two more questions here. Who is paying to watch my children when I'm at work the other three days? At this point in time, the school district doesn't. We did receive this, and this question is in the FAQ. The district doesn't receive any funding to pay for child care costs for families, so that wouldn't be something that the district so uh, we're saying that uh, but place. we do recognize that it's a very uh, difficult to hardship the same, just to and the long distance learning the one of the things pushing learning. us and making it difficult is that the physical social distancing and the dimensions and the size of our classrooms um, can we have an option for parents and teachers that don't want all these measures taken to send their kids to one school and those that want extreme measures taken that can be put at the same school? And the answer at this point in time is no. We're not able to have two different sets of policies and rules depending on the risk factors or the willingness of folks to take risks. So we will have one set of unified, consistent, fair, so appropriate have, standards. So for clarification of supplies, how would they be? Right? Okay. How many hours will students be attending school? So in the current plan, Students will be in school two days a week. The school day is about seven and, and a quarter hours long, so that gets us to about 14 hours a week. And then when they're home, they'll have a very detailed schedule with required assignments and required activities that will equate to another I think, each yeah, day, I think that question hours and hours, maybe, I would uh, roughly put <laughs> yeah, in about no, five hours of work every day with them. Yeah, that's a good question, then. <laughs> no problem. Bye. How are we doing on phone calls? Okay, so we have a few questions here. Right. Um, what would happen to students that continue to not keep a uh, um, distance away from other students that continue to violate? Them? That's a great question. Um, 
We have a, a series of rules on our campuses, and these social distancing rules aren't any different than the rules we have um, for appropriate uh, conduct. And so it would be always going through the process of saying, you, this is the rule, I'm teaching you how to behave, I'm working with you, we're creating a culture where kids are asked to do the right thing every day. Um, could there be a disciplinary consequence? We haven't gotten to that point. We're not looking at it in that way. We're looking at it more as a, a teaching tool, as a process to educate children, uh, because we believe that the parents will assist us and support us in sending that positive message about the importance of social distancing. So the next concern was subs. So if we are short on subs and with the group that has 16, will we uh, place kids in other classes? No, at no point in time will we ever um, ignore the requirement for social distancing. And uh, this was more of a, just a comment. Um, so if we have a lot of concerns regarding um, all the social distancing, um, her, her question was either we all go back or we all stay in long distance learning. It sounds her concern is the fact that there is a lot of unknowns and a lot of what ifs. Well, one of the reasons our plan doesn't involve everyone, the whole district staying on, on distance learning is that we know that it's not working for all students at this time. So we feel very strongly that we have to bring kids back the maximum amount possible with safety for students and safety for staff. There's questions about supplies, um, school supplies and disinfectants. Uh, are we going to keep everything in stock so that we are, don't have a shortage? We're working on that now. Our district is moving forward um, with a, a purchase order that we're working through the FEMA process. Um, doing so will allow the district to receive uh, tens of thousands of dollars in savings and many of the things that we're purchasing, such as those yes, yeah. hand washing stations, some outdoor pressure water, uh, hot water pressure washers, um, purchasing sprayers and foggers for classrooms to disinfect, all of the hand sanitizer, all of the hand soap, okay. all, of, all of the PPE, the face coverings, the gloves, all is going to be going towards this big purchase that we have set up. Um, and we've already, already been able to stockpile enough okay. um, that we feel good okay. about going into next Thank year. you, Ms. Lang. Bye. Okay, so next question is CE just released uh, scheduling models. Uh, yes. There's an option for an AM PM rotation. Yeah. Why is that not being considered in this district? It was being considered. Um, thank you for asking that question. So the CDE, as you, the, the document that we suggested families look at is called Stronger Together, it was released today. And it was Can one of four uh, recommendations that was put out. Um, four day, five days a week, but half days. The issue is the really uh, tight constraint of getting children to and from school and then the ability to sanitize the campus in only one hour in between groups of students. So that might work at a really small school, maybe a school with 100 kids or 200 kids, but when you're talking about a school with, uh, let's use uh, Gavin Hills HDLA as an example, school, almost a thousand students, we could not ensure that those campuses would be cleaned and disinfected. And that was the main reason that we didn't consider the half in the morning, half in the afternoon program. Okay, so I think go back to normal. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Bye. Okay, a couple of questions. So the first one is uh, um, Will we have a separate school where a parent can sign a waiver and the student can just attend? Um, yeah, I answered that question, and the answer to that question is no. We won't have a school that has a different set of policies that has less, less restrictive. Um, standards such as less than six feet of social distancing or, or not wearing face coverings or not doing the, the other steps that we have in place. So the district will have one set of guidelines for all the schools. And is there a chance that the, we can, uh, sometime during the year that we can, the students will be going back to school normally again? I hope so. I hope that the guidelines and the recommendations change and that as a result of that, we're able to bring Actually, students on more and more frequently. And I do have a question. Will students Did you have a question? with IEPs have their service service uh, minutes decreased? No worries. Or it's okay. will they be the same? The IEP team huh? for every child will work with families 
and follow the IEP process to make sure that individualized services and support um, as appropriate and using, uh, basically, our, our plan is to implement IEPs. Then we have, uh, are you sending home a computer for each child? Yes, the district is putting in place a one-to-one -one program. That means one student, one computer, every child. If the child can't, uh, what if the child can't be on the parent's computer? They will have their own computer. And we're getting low on text message questions, but we still have 26 callers. So I wanna encourage those callers. You can ask your question via chat. And while Mr. Romero is taking phone calls, I can get your chat questions here and we can continue the questions rolling through. Rolling through the whole time. Okay, you're scheduled. There we go. Okay, sounds good. All right. Mrs. Cruz, you've got the next question for me coming soon. All right, Mr. Romero's taking his. Uh, oh, another great okay, thing. So, so any, every single any, question uh, been receiving, uh, that gets put into the chat receiving, box will be put school. into the FAQ. So we'll answer every okay, single question. Good. It, might have, it might be a half an hour after this meeting or an hour after the meeting, but we will answer every question. Okay, uh, what is the drop-off situation is going to be, especially for a kinder for the first time? Um, drop-off will look very different. Um, we will uh, set up some times for our kindergartners to have the hand-to-hand -hand, uh, on the parent's side to be able to walk them into their classroom. So what we talked about, for example, is we may have, in previous years, allowed parents to walk all the way up to the classroom and physically walk them into their classroom. That will need to change because of social distancing. But we might may be able to have parents come in, say, a week before and have a scheduled time to come in and walk through the classroom and understand where their child's going to go. Um, and because we do have smaller groups of kids um, entering, we think that we can have a good process to get our kindergartners and first graders onto our campuses. Okay. Uh, will the students be staying with the same group and the same teacher? Yes. The time? Um, one of the biggest recommendations from the CDE plan, the California Department of Ed plan, is to avoid mixing groups of students to the extent possible. So we plan to have students with the same students and with the same teacher the majority of the day. Hi, Andy. Um, here's a question. So are you saying that my incoming oh, kindergarten sorry, should be able screen. to learn from home by himself because he has two days of person, in-person school per week? So, excellent question. I have a kindergartner myself. The difficulty that we're going through here is we know for children who are five years old and six years old, it is preferable. It is much better to have them in school five days a week. We, we recognize that and we understand that. The hard part is acknowledging that in order to accomplish that, we have to have six feet of social distance on our campuses. If that oh, okay. provision were to change, the mask, then said, we would be really able to have more kids in class well. okay. five days a week for school. But we feel that the combination of a solid plan when kids are home and strong instruction when kids are in school, we will see evidence, clear evidence of kids learning, even all the way down to TK and kinder. Mr. Romero. Okay, uh, what is the kinder schedule going to look like? Is it going to be the same as the others? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, I have a middle school student who has asthma, mm -hmm. and uh, if she has trouble uh, breathing, can she um, not take off the mask? And will, will she need a doctor's note for that? Um, I think we, we always want to have notes from doctors because I think that gives us more information. Um, but if a child is ever having difficulty breathing, we absolutely want them to remove the mask so that we can assist them with that. Um, but another option might be a face shield for a child in a situation like that. Um, how will substitute teachers and volunteers log their attendance for um, classes they participated in? 
volunteers will be extremely limited next school year, so that will be a big change um, because that's, again, one of the strong recommendations in the CDE plan. And substitute teachers will be assigned by the school, so we'll know what room hello? substitute teachers have been in. Hi, did you have a question? Yes, hello? Can you hear me? Next question is, what support is being provided for our teachers so that they don't burn out? That's an excellent question. Um, yes. One of the biggest things we're doing is we are working with teachers and we're talking to teachers. We're planning with teachers. Um, one of the things that we chose to do last week and this week is provide our teachers with time to plan with yes. each other and to attend important training that they needed. Uh, and then as we move forward into next school year, our system of providing teacher so, support will so remain if, if you, the if same, you which is just to clarify your each so if you teacher right is assigned program, to a school with a um, principal who's there to support that, them that and facilitate for them. All of our employees receive uh, assistance via um, our district um, uh, policies to be able to provide uh, social emotional supports for staff. Uh, and then I think the biggest thing is just to um, just treat all of our employees so the way we want to be treated. Be thoughtful, to listen to them, and work with them. Either, uh, and we definitely plan to do all of those things. So, here, let me. I'll, I'll, I'll have an answer to that one then. Okay. So, you, so, other people might have. All right. Next question is: What will happen to support students? Some students can learn online, others cannot do it with one Zoom call per week, and that's an excellent point. So what we are doing next school year as this plan develops is we have students in school for 14 hours a week. So that allows us to have that instructional time absolutely starting next year in a way that okay, isn't have happening the now because the kids are home all day, right? Or both. And we can't see them. All right. Next question, are you able to make sure that teachers are all using the same apps? When homeschooling one student yes. would go from Google Classroom to Clever and another would have to use Class Dojo. Too many logins. So we are working with our teachers and with so, our principals so the school, to so bring all of our programs to, in alignment with each other. Have to come so to thank you for that question because we want it to be so, easy yeah, for families to help their children when they have assignments on homework. No. I mean, I can ask him that, okay? Okay, is that a, okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, what can I do if I have not been getting notification um, from my school? She's concerned that she will, she will miss her, her schedule. Yeah. We will, the school district will contact every single family. And, and then obviously we want parents to also contact our school via phone to make sure that they get that information. All of our school offices are open. And uh, we have some more questions regarding the RISE program, yes. um, how, how it's going to work and what's the difference between a RISE program and the three days that they will be off. Yeah. Um, and, would it, and would it be live, would it be live instruction? That they would be there, there's a big difference. So the first big difference in the RISE Academy is that you have a very, very streamlined and organized academic program that is 100% online. Hi, how are you doing? So the reason that's different is because Good, thank you. your child will move at their own pace through all of the academic work that they're doing in Hollister Rise. When they're in class, if they were to be on the hybrid rotational attendance, that would be different because they're following the plan that the teacher so has set up for the development and the progress of, of the entire class of students. Okay. Question, would parents be able to pick the two days again? We'll put out a message to all parents, letting them know of their tentative assignments, the and we will attempt as much as possible, and to the extent oh. possible, to have so. families be able to have their okay. children all on the so same. So if you're what? Yeah, so if you're watching and you can actually see it on the YouTube. Thing. Question, what will Can happen when a teacher or right student to tests line. positive for coronavirus? Yeah. Yeah. That is an excellent know. question. That's an excellent question. Yeah. So little, what the current guidelines are side. regarding positive okay. coronavirus testing results okay. is the following. Yeah, okay. So okay. Next the first thing no is problem. to require the student and staff to remain at home for up to 14 days 
if they report those symptoms and for all staff to receive training in recognizing those symptoms. In addition, staff or students with confirmed COVID-19 would return to campus if their fever is resolved without the use of fever-reducing medication and after respiratory symptoms such as shortness of breath or coughing have improved Hello? and Sorry. after having a negative COVID-19 test result. Hello? Right. Another question, uh, will the school year be extended uh, for 2021 due to the COVID closure this year? At this point in time, we don't have an extended school year in our plan. Uh, we do have a question here, will there be an adult to meet my special needs son oh. to walk to class if he cannot wear yes. a mask? The and answer is, we will support all of our students with special needs. If they require an adult to walk them to class, we will support them in that way. Thank you for that question. Um, question, can I'm teachers wear clear vinyl masks? Yep. Teachers will be provided both options. Because again, we okay. want them to be able, especially a lot of our primary teachers are very worried about children needing to see how they form words and how they express their language. So we're definitely looking at, at both options for our, our teachers. All right, question, Mr. Romero's taking a call. Mrs. Cruz is over here writing quickly. I see her question coming in. There we go. Will I be able to provide my child with their own belongings, such as scissors, pencils, etc.? Just to clarify your question. So and how will the how district they, support um, teachers having do enough all materials for all children? Was it what happened? Excellent so question. You're thinking they're behind, or will children have to have their own materials next year? Here's the answer: Yes. Will we provide them the materials? Okay. Yes. So next year, if a parent were to just be kind and want their child to have their own materials that they purchased, we would allow that. But we will go into next school year making sure that every child has scissors, pencils, erasers, paper, markers, uh, a dry erase board, those kinds of in-class supplies that are needed. Um, we would make sure that they have them all and they have them right next to them in a little either a little cubby or a little bucket or a little thank you. tray that they would sit that right next questions? to their desk. Okay, thank you. Mr. Romero, you're up. Yes, so um, how realistic are the expectations for uh, this new uh, program What's, with parents that need to work? And uh, what is, uh, how, how fair is it that parents um, for parents who, who have the ability to stay at home with versus the parents who have to go to work and not, not be able to help their kids as much. Yeah, I think that the, that's one of the hardest things we're looking at right now. I think, um, I think the RISE Academy will be an excellent program for our students. I think we'll have students thriving on, on the RISE Academy. Um, is it fair when one family has a, a parent that stays home and a parent two parents that work out of the home. Um, I don't think it feels that way when you when you have to leave home and work out of the house um, and when you have parents that are home uh, with their children. Um, and I think what we are trying to do is we're trying to put together plans that give parents a way to help their children. Give parents those YouTube videos. Give children all a computer. Give children a Wi-Fi hotspot if they need it support kids online, and then also seeing them twice per week, full days of school. Yeah. Um, what is going to be the remedy um, once that COVID-19 is over, and how are we gonna help our students catch up with their lost time? Well, I think we're doing that now. I think we're, I think we're working every day to support students in their academics. I think we're trying as much as we can to help children now support them, assist them with their yes, academics. Um, we know that there's gonna be a long time in between now and the start of school, so we wanna encourage parents to continue to use those devices that you have in your home now, between now and the beginning of school. Um, but I would say our, our biggest focus is to set up an academic program going into next year that's strong, that's gonna support our children with their academics next year. Question, how different will the middle school function from elementary? It'll be very different. Um, I 
think older students can be expected to do things very differently. So um, one of the things that we have in our plan is to have students take most of their classes in the same okay. physical environment. So that's so you're that's a difference from they prior start years. off in the hybrid program and then you decide you want to put it on the rice program. Is that correct? And Mr. Romero's talking loud, so I just had to pause for a second. I didn't want to didn't want to have that overlap. So here's a question. What happens if homeschooling isn't working and the student is falling behind and they are failing, but parents can't help because so, of work so schedules? So if they're in a hybrid program, like well, I mentioned. One of the things that we be strongly to believe the, with the Hoster Rise uh, Academy is like we believe the, that that teacher program. who's supervising, we believe that that teacher can support children to succeed in Hollister Rise Academy. Um, if and when we determine that the child wasn't making progress, then we would step in to support those children. Um, and there may be some instances where it is better for the child to be back okay. on campus, and okay. we may so recommend I'll, that, I'll but we would want to go through a good process to make sure that they're implementing the Hollister Rise Academy so that it's, it works for them. And then I have one more lavender sticky, but now Mrs. Cruz is working on yellow sticky, so that's catching my eye. But I have uh, okay. students are getting face-to-face right, -face you know. teacher instruction twice per week, and the answer to that is yes. Face-to-face, -face, in person, no more than 16 kids at a time in a class. Again, to comply with the six feet of social distancing at all times. Uh, next question. So, if a parent has a, um, a student has health concerns and they start the program in the hybrid program and they decide that uh, um, they need to stay home, can they do a 20 day contract? Excellent question. The district does have what's called a short term independent study contract, and we'll continue to have that in place. So, we receive some questions saying, What if I don't want to immediately put my child in Hollister Rise Academy? Would it be possible? to have them start the year on short-term independent study? The answer is yes, but here's the second part to my answer. I wouldn't recommend it because it is very important for your child, if they're going to be on campus learning, to start the year with that teacher, to have that experience of the first two weeks of school. I would, I would hope that the plan is detailed enough and thorough enough by the time we adopt it on the 23rd of, of June that parents understand what on-campus learning will look like so we can move forward with that. Then I have, what about the art classes? Our current plan is to continue to have art instruction, so thank you for that question. Next question, please don't waste our money on all that PPE stuff. I will tell you, um, we were very lucky to have support from the San Benito County Office of Education. So the district, at no cost to the district, received a very large shipment of uh, personal protective or equipment or PPE, so thank you for that. Um, so the next question is, on the three days of distance learning, will teachers be available for Zoom or Google question, meetings? Just to clarify, the current plan going into next year the, yeah, you have the option is to either go when teachers are teaching program, Monday and Tuesday, the students who are home Monday and Tuesday are working online, doing all their assignments at home. On that Wednesday, when the teacher is home and all the students are home, there may be a way for teachers to send messages and provide updates and check-ins to ensure that kids are following through on the work that they're supposed to do. But when it comes back to the last two days of the week, okay. Thursday okay. and Friday, okay. the teacher will be right? teaching during that time. Okay. So that means the other students will need to be home distance learning. Are all schools going to have the same um, hybrid plan? Yes. And uh, what is the criteria for a student to be eligible for a Chromebook and a hotspot? Every student next year will receive a Chromebook. Hotspots will send out a survey to parents requesting that you ask to have one of the districts, uh, one of the thousand hotspots that the district has, uh, and we'll take you through that process. If my oldest child is attending the high school, is there any info they will be taking the same measures? And if so, we want to go ahead and leave that to our, our, our partners over at the San Benito High School District. Um, I know that they're working um, to bring those plans and those ideas forward, and I want to, I want to encourage uh, parents to, 
to follow follow along with their communication um, and get that get those updates from the high school. Okay, it's six forty-seven, and actually now it does. Um, Brandon, so I, it does I, feel just like it's for a question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I feel that I've been talking for a long time. Like, finally, sorry. I do I have to say though, when I was a student. Um, my teachers would like, say, you can talk this. all day long, can't you, Diego? <laughs> I'm testing that theory right now. So if students are not allowed to share supplies, what happens when he or she forgets a pencil or okay. a computer? Right. So we will provide them with supplies. supplies. We will okay. always have okay. extra supplies. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, bye. Mr. Yes. Romero, you're so, up. Some good questions. We're going to so, take, we're gonna take 10 more phone calls. <laughs> and then the last, I think we have 22 in the queue. The last group of calls that we don't get to, or we have 18, so we'll take 10 more. Those last eight phone calls, I'm gonna ask you to uh, essentially submit uh, your question on, on chat, and we'll answer those in an FAQ. So, Mr. Romero. Are we having after school sports? No. Okay. Under the current guidelines, kids can't be more than six feet apart, from, or closer than six feet from one another. Middle school students, um, are they still moving around uh, per period? In our current plan, children will remain in the same room the maximum amount possible. There are some classes, a few classes, where that is impossible, and we'll work with those teachers. What is the schedule going to look like for the RISE program? The RISE Academy will work as follows. Your child will sign up for one of three time frames. There will be an 8 in the morning to 11 time frame, an 11 to 2 p.m. time frame, and a 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. time frame. Nice how you doing? The reason we're gonna divide it that way is we don't want children on their computer for six hours a day, every day. So we have to stretch it out in order to have kids not fall into the challenge of constantly being on their computer. Yeah. To give them those breaks, to give them those, you know, the, the structure of their day. Um, here's a question. What happens if a child broke a computer at school? I think what we do now is we, we determine whether or not the child purposely damaged the computer. If, if a child purposely damages a computer, then we're going to ask the parents to pay for that device. Um, that's one of the reasons we're allowing a bring your own device because then it's your device, your child. Uh, there's no way your, your child's going to ruin a a uh, device from the uh, district if you give them uh, your own device. Chromebooks, uh, yes. do they return the Chromebook or do they keep No, them? keep your Chromebooks. The only kids who need to turn in their Chromebooks are eighth graders. So if you have a child in eighth grade this year that will be at San Benito High School next year, they're supposed to turn in their Chromebooks this week before the promotion ceremony. So everyone else, keep your device all summer long. I have a student at Sarah Vista and AAA. Would, um, would they be provided busing? No. Um, the current plan for busing is when children uh, opt into the AAA program, we don't provide transportation for that program. Hello? And another Thank question you. here. Yeah, yes. My daughter will be attending migrant okay. preschool. How will that look? We expect preschool to follow their same set of guidelines. Um, we actually have a preschool program starting next week at Sunny Slope Elementary School. We're opening up preschool uh, provided by YMCA. And let me give you an example of their, their new guidelines. They will never have more than nine children in their room. One teacher. Okay, nine shows two questions here so that's going to greatly change the way that program works they won't have shared supplies they won't have so a lot of things will change in that program we expect that to also happen with our preschools is there a provision for tutors at this time we don't have an online tutoring system but we do have resources for your children to be able to watch instructional videos that are tied to the content we give them Alright, okay, next question. Is the school calendar being it? affected or changed due to the kids only attending school two days a week? We think that the school calendar will stay very close to what it is now, um, so this program won't necessarily cause a big change in the school calendar. And Mr. Romero's coming in with a question here, so he's got 
Uh, nine questions left. Yeah. Nine questions left. So we've got. Are going to address uh -huh. them? Okay. Will there be temperature checks daily? Yes, temperature checks will happen every single day. Thank you for that question. Mr. Romero, okay. are you ready? Yes, okay, right. thank you. Thank you. Uh, no problem, Bye. Okay, some questions. Um, how are meals gonna be delivered for the students who are under three days off? Yeah. Excellent question. So our plan is to provide kids food as they're leaving campus. Students will take their food with them at the end of the day, and our plan is to continue to have pickup food service. So our, our goal is to uh, arrange it so that when kids are leaving, they're taking home their food for the next three days. Uh, does, that's the current plan. Does a student with medical issues have to wear a mask? Um, not necessarily. So when a student has a, a um, medical note stating that they can't wear a face covering, we would work with our district nurses and work with their doctor to come up with an alternative for that student, one of which may be a face shield. How can we be sure that a staff member uh, is, does not have the COVID if, it, if they're not showing symptoms? Uh, well, that's an excellent question. We have 25% is what the current research says of, of uh, COVID uh, patients were non uh, symptomatic, so are asymptomatic. So we won't know, but we believe all of these measures we're taking, the face coverings, the six feet of social distance, the daily temperature checks, the education about COVID symptoms, we believe that's all going to greatly reduce that risk. Then I have, if parents can do drop off at school, can some students be placed in another school that isn't crowded? Um, we have, we, we have um, open registration policy, so we, we encourage families that feel that another school is right for their child to go out and submit an intra-district transfer request. Okay. Um, what would happen if a parent refuses to sign uh, for either programs uh, due to the concerns of safety of their child? Well, at this time, uh, Mr. Romero, these are the two programs that are in our draft plan, meaning we have a fully online program in which your child wouldn't come on campus and have that exposure to his or her classmates. And then we have a program that ensures social distancing, the wearing of face coverings, the daily temperature checks, the daily routine hand washing, the changes in the school lunch program, the changes in the recess program. So all of that adds up to offering this other option to families. Um, and those are the two options at this time. How will we address the emotional and psychological um, needs due to the COVID? And will we, will, will we be providing counseling? Yes. The district is working really hard on that one issue um, right now. We are working with um, local oh, officials. We're working with local universities. We plan to have a big increase in the number of counselors and counseling interns that work for our district next school year. Um, we will provide more counseling next year than we did this year. Uh, and we will have a system of supports that allow us to identify a child that's having uh, emotional, social emotional concerns and to be able to provide counseling for that child. Uh, next question is how are lunch routines going to work? Where are the students eating lunch? So, so just it could be in two different places. One is in their classroom. The days that are two is the outdoors in the lunch area. But in those lunch areas, be checking on we'll need to sanitize those tables each time one group leaves and another group shows up. And it'll, the sanitizing solution will need to sit and dry for 10 minutes. So we're looking at both of those options. Okay. Um, we think it may be a combination of both at each school. Question, so a middle school teacher will have their, the same teacher for math, ELA, history, etc. Under our current recommended plan, they would have different teachers for each of those subjects, but the students would not change classes. The teachers would change classes. So thank you for that question. Next question, in China, the children went right back to school full time, full classes. Oh, and why would California be more stringent? What I would say is I can't speak for 
the governor or the state superintendent of public instruction. Um, but we do also have another layer, our local public health officials. And right now, in our county, you. we have very clear requirements for how businesses reopen and how, um, how our community is reopening. And I would say, think about how that fits for us in Hollister. Um, I live in Hollister. So when I drive by um, parks, these parks are closed. Um, when I uh, go for my evening walk, people are socially distancing six feet. When I go into stores, there's a line at the front. Everybody's six feet apart, standing on okay. orange tape or blue tape. There's an employee wiping down every surface right. when you walk in at the grocery store. Any other questions? Um, so I think those things, those things will, will naturally <laughs> okay, be no expected in our school environments. Yeah. What support will there be for struggling students? There'll be lots and lots of supports for struggling students. Uh, the first and foremost, we're super excited about this. All of our primary teachers are receiving okay. Horton Gilliam's right. reading support questions. strategies training Thank this you. week and last week. So we're super excited about that. In addition to that, we have an early literacy reading program in place at all of our schools next year. Every student has access to Footsteps of Brilliance. In terms of the math support, every child has access to Eureka digital resources. They can review lessons, they can review strategies, they can watch a video, go back, watch it again, try it again. So we're feeling excited about how we can support our students next year. Okay, so I'm starting to run out of breath for you guys. <laughs> I feel like I'm on my last. How many more questions do we have, Brandon? Five more questions? Uh, more in the chat. Okay, all right, Mr. Romero. Okay, so if a, if a student's in the hybrid um, version, uh, will, will teachers teach students um, how to log in online and how to work the programs, online programs? During. Say it one more time. I'm sorry. So, <coughs> the students in the hybrid program, mm -hmm. will the teachers teach the students how to uh, log in during those three days that they will not be at school? Yes, the teachers will absolutely make sure that the kids understand how to log in. The big thing here is now there'll be accountability because they know they're going to see their teacher in three days. And right now, they haven't seen their teachers in three months. So, that's it. If you've been a teacher, and those of you teachers out there watching, hi, nice to see you, you know that that face-to-face -face accountability counts for a lot. So well, we have an open house um, for to teach parents how to log in. That's a, it's, what a great question. One of our biggest plans, and it's in our document, is parent trainings. We expect to upload videos and have meetings every week for parents. We expect to have parent trainings, parent online YouTube uh, sessions, parent videos, parent handouts, and it's going to be provided to all parents to be able to support their children next year. They just wanted you to clarify if uh, they will be, if, they, if they're in a hybrid, can they switch over to the RISE or vice versa? Excellent question. So here's the biggest question is if a child signs up for Hollister RISE Academy, should that child go back to can. hybrid learning? How you doing? My, my recommendation as an educator is understand what the Hollister Rise Academy is asking and sign up knowing what is expected in that Hollister Rise Academy. And if that's the case, then commit to working through that program. Once that's in place, you'll have a master teacher who's grade. assigned to you and you'll be able to grade, get support right? from that grade. teacher to make sure that your child is progressing. Will those students be able to return to campus if they go through that process? Yes, the one difference is it's based on space availability in their classroom. So parents need to understand that it is not simply uh, a guarantee that they would go back and be in, in a specific teacher at a specific grade level because that, um, that's based on space availability. So, okay. thank you. Okay. Okay. Can you provide a sample lesson or week of rise so we can evaluate that option? Answer is yes. We will okay. absolutely thank provide you. parents a sample of a week's instruction and assignments in both programs. 
Okay, um, my daughter is, uh, um, is 10 years old, mm -hmm. uh, going to HDLA, she's a becoming sixth grader. Uh, will she qualify for the face covering? Does she need to wear a face covering? Everyone who's 12 years old, and our expectation is sixth, seventh, and eighth graders throughout the district, we would, would ask for face coverings to be worn. The RICE program, is that the entire year? Our request is that parents sign up for the year. And, you know, it's obviously dependent on a couple of other factors. So if the health guidelines were to change in a major way and we were allowed to bring parents or more students back on campus, then we would absolutely welcome those kids back onto our campuses. Um, but as it stands right now, we're asking for it to be a year-long commitment. How long do we have to... Uh... Do we have to decide whether we want to pick the RISE program or hybrid? Um, you'll have several weeks. So school won't start again until August 17th. We're here today on June 8th giving you these options and talking to you about these Correct. options. Yeah, right. And some parents will know right away, they'll know today, I want RISE Academy, I'm going to sign my child up for RISE Academy. And others will want to wait just a little bit longer and, and that will work too. Will they be doing their core classes on the two days they're on campus? The, the teachers, Our students will have their teachers, classes on the, the days teachers? that they're on okay. campus, absolutely. Okay. If one student or teacher is infected with COVID-19, will the whole class and teacher have to be quarantined at home for 14 days? Excellent question. What we know right now about exposure guidelines is if a child or teacher has known exposure, we would immediately work with our local public health officials. Okay. And if it was determined that others had reasonable exposure to that particular child or that particular teacher, then we would absolutely follow through with those recommendations to self-quarantine or self-isolate at home. Um, but there are a number of different reasons that that would happen in one case versus another. So thank you for that question. What support is in place for ELD students? Okay. One of the big supports that is now coming into focus okay. for us, especially at our middle school level, is a training that we're providing to all of our teachers in something called Constructing Meaning. It's one of the most high quality uh, trainings that is available out there to support English learners, and we're excited that all of our teachers at our middle schools have received that training. And then in addition, we have targeted explicit language instruction through our program called Benchmark Advance. That's applied to every child in our district. And then the last thing is providing teachers with professional development on ELD blended learning instruction. So. Okay, um, the question is, are we providing, um, providing a COVID test for teachers so to make sure that they are not asymptomatic um, when students return? All of our teachers will have access to the same um, coronavirus test as any any other member of the public, so it would not necessarily be more, um, but rather if a teacher had symptoms of coronavirus, the fever, the sore throat, the coughing, then we would put in place all of our, our steps to be able to determine whether or not that, that person should um, go seek medical confirmation of whatever their symptoms were. Okay, um, they want to know why um why we cannot do live streaming um, and do five days a week. Yeah, so again, what, one of the things that's important to, to realize here is just the importance of privacy, of not divulging and not having our, our, our classrooms be uh, videotaped for extended periods in that way. Um, and so that's, that's the, the, the brief but very important answer to that one. Mr. Romero. Um, next question is, uh, how are we going to deal with uh, with a student um, is sick at school? Excellent question. So if a student were to come on campus, we would have a, a screening before they come on campus. Hi, Mike. So that's Thank the you. first way. The second way is when they come into class and the teacher oh, recognizes the symptoms or the child shows the symptoms, that child would immediately go up to the health clerk office. The health clerk would take the temperature, ask the screening questions, and if it was determined that that child may have coronavirus, they would be in a separate supervised room. We would contact the family, invite the family to come pick up the child, and at that point in time, 
start the process of working with local public health to let them know about a, a, a situation that they might need to be aware. Will they be an option for outside classes and eating areas? Is there any question? Question on the on the two days when I have group A in class, will I have the group B on Google Meet simultaneously? And the answer to that one is no. Um, again, that's the same question about streaming or live video recording the lessons. And at this time, our current draft plan doesn't include that option. Perfect. Um, um, next question. question: Once school is in session, if we choose to send them to school okay. and end Thank up you. not liking it, can we change to rise? The, the answer there is again, it's based on space availability. So we, we would need to ensure that there's space in the RISE Academy in order to facilitate that change. Okay. Mr. Romero. Um, or have, um, is having classes outside an option? Classrooms outside present a number of different challenges, Mr. Romero. The first is the, um, the issue about where we would put desks and how we would arrange them and the uh, exposure to the sun, the exposure to the cold, the temperatures changing throughout the day, the noise, the fact that we want kids to have recess outside. So that's, that would kind of get in our way on that one as well. And you have another question? Um, no. Okay. So that, another one's coming in though. <laughs> we have nine more calls and I have one, two, three, four more stickies. Will the RISE Academy application be sent to everyone or only for the ones who request them? Our plan is to make those available to everyone. Question for HDLA. If they are not allowed to change classrooms, how will they get their English and Spanish classes? So I want to make sure we are clear. Our current plan limits the amount of movement, but it does not necessarily eliminate it. So we would have certain classes where the child would move from class A to class B, but in order to do so, we have to implement yes, certain yes. cleaning policies um, in order to facilitate that kind of change. Okay. No problem. Bye. Bye. So uh, where would the frequently asked questions be posted? We will email it to every parent who has an email registered to our uh, Infinite Campus database. And we will post it after tonight. We'll create a um, reopening a tab on our district's webpage and we'll load all of these documents. Hi, Veronica. Question Will instruction be daily for RISE? Yes, kids will have work to do every single day in RISE Academy. Question What about kids who have allergies that cause them Thank to cough? For the comment. How will that be dealt with? It's an excellent question. We talked about that in our task force. The key is that. A symptom like coughing has to be connected to another symptom like having a temperature. Mm -hmm. So we know that there are lots of students that have coughs that last for three weeks, four weeks, five weeks. We're not going to send those children home every single time they have a cough. But we'll implement the strategy of do the health screening, okay. check the temperature, and if there are two or three symptoms, then we would put those, those strategies in place. Question, will there be more staff on site to make sure the social distancing requirements are being okay. followed? That's an excellent question. At present, we expect to implement all these changes with the staff that we currently have. I will mention our numbers of students using this program are down significantly. The number came all the way down, so we expect that to be more manageable. But at this time, we expect to have the same number of staff members. Um, engaging in this work that we did last year. All right. Okay. For school transportation, is there an option available for pickup for kids and is that going to be controlled as well? We will continue to have transportation. What will be different is it'll have to be implemented with social distancing every day, every bus route, every child. So that, that's the one change, the, the screening strategies, that will make it different than it has been in the past. Mrs. Cruz, one more question here. Brandon, how many more questions? Okay. No, we'll be All back, right. that's probably like six or eight. <laughs> okay. 
How can you be sure that no students or staff comes to school with COVID if they don't show for 14 days per CDC? We can't, but all of the strategies okay, we're putting into place. Okay. Daily temperature no, no screening. No problem, it sounds like it, yeah. Daily health okay. screening. Thank you. Daily uh, social distancing while on campus. Uh, face coverings, all of those add up to minimizing, greatly minimizing the risk. And uh, Mr. Um, the, the caller wanted to say thank you for everything you're doing. Thank you. We really appreciate thank that. Thank you. Um, they want to know um, if uh, parents are allowed to walk their students to class for any grade level. Excellent question. The answer is no. So one of the biggest changes will be the importance of greatly, greatly minimizing and reducing adults on campus that are not employees of the school. And so part of the reason is that's one of the most clear recommendations coming from the state of California, the Department of Education. Um, can elementary uh, students wear masks if they want? Um, I think so. Yeah, I think that's an excellent question. I think, you know, our perspective is we wouldn't require it um, at this point in time in our plan, but it would definitely be something that students could, could elect to wear. Um, why is the school cutting staff and teachers? That's an excellent question. One of the very little talked about uh, consequences of coronavirus is the major, major decrease in funding that is has been talked about in the governor's proposed budget and the huge increase in cost that the district has had to take on as a result of coronavirus. So just to take you through a list of some of the things that we have had to take on as a cost, the cost of our, our student nutrition program has increased greatly. Okay. Uh, the cost of food has increased. The cost of personal protective equipment, okay. the cost of soap, the cost of hand sanitizer, the cost, the okay. whole um, combined cost of okay. all of the additional question. things, technology, Thank you. Wi-Fi, uh, Chromebooks, all of those costs factor into it. Um, Mr. Romero. Okay, so playground. Uh, will a student be able to play in the playground or just on the field and will they be sharing sports? Well, right now our plan calls for the place structure to be uh, off limits. And the reason is that that's a place where children grab hand railings, touch, they're all over. Uh, so we would restrict access to the place structure, but the rest of the playground, oh, yes. we expect for it to be open. Uh, <clears throat> question on the RISE Academy. So the RISE Academy is developed in a way that Students and parents implement their learning every day, have a schedule for when they're online, work through assignments, work through progress, and they meet once a week with their supervising teacher. So the difference between that and the in-school program is the in-school program is your child will receive 14 hours of face-to-face -face time with their teacher um, every week in the RISE Academy, it's one hour a week of instruction, of time with their supervising teacher. And it's a very different kind of meeting that happens in the RISE Academy versus happens uh, when teachers are with students. Mr. Ocho, will there be staff to monitor to make sure that students are following the rules and washing their hands? Tell me again. Will there be st uh, staff there to monitor students to make sure they are following the rules and washing their hands? Absolutely, absolutely. We, we plan to have um, employees um, regularly monitoring hand washing and hand sanitizing all throughout campus. For students who are off on the, th on the three days, um, will they be able, will they pick up uh, their, their lunches or will they be delivered to the classroom? We expect them to be actually taken home when the kids leave campus on their, their last day. So one group of kids will be on that Friday, another group of kids will be on that Tuesday they would take their meals home for the next three days. Okay. Um, will there be any fundraising um, during uh, next school year? I think there's a lot of online fundraising that happens. And I think that given the, the need to socially distance, I think that's the process we might have to use. Um, 
Question is, will my child be able to bring a backpack? At this time, we haven't gotten all the way down to that detail. Um, the one thing I would say is we want question. it to be to remain with that child on idea. their chair so that it isn't something that is being shared with other kids. Yeah. I just know. And then I have a question on moderate to severe. How will it look next year? Yeah. So I again, I'll, because it's a special education program, the first thing I would say is we look at every single child's IEP. We implement every single child's individual education program. Okay. And we acknowledge that there's a great need for consistency no and structure. And that distance learning right. is not if district learning or distance learning is problematic and not effective, we will consider that as we plan moving forward into August. Mr. Romero. Uh, this was actually uh, one of our SPED questions. Um, for students who are not severe, um, what, are we, what are our plans for, um, for students who don't know how to use a Chromebook? That's an excellent question. Um, what we're looking at now for many of our Mod Severe programs is implementing touch screen technology that's much easier to access going into next school year. Um, in addition, um, what we want is uh, a focus on using functional apps in their academic program for all of our students that really, that really encourage and, and put forth the importance of communications and using apps online that, that are touch screen based that, that greatly improve a student's ability to communicate. Hi Anthony. Uh, question, what happens if a child becomes active with COVID-19 while attending school? So again, if we have a case where a child comes in, is on campus and says, I don't feel well, I have a temperature and is coughing, that student comes up to the health clerk's office, we do our health assessment, we take the temperature, we call parents, we move forward with that process. That child goes home, they're isolated at that time, and once it's determined that in fact uh, COVID-19 was uh, present, was, was evident, then we would move into the self-isolation. Are you talking about the Rice Academy or are you talking about um, the three days? Uh, question is, how will you deal with kids who go to the school nurse just to get out of school. I don't think that will happen three days, right? Um, I think our students will be excited to be on campus. I think they'll they'll greatly, greatly um, want those those opportunities to be with their friends on campus, to be in their classes on campus. Um, I think that the health assessments are are the kind of assessments that we can determine. Well, you need to go back to class. You know, this is you you. Uh, have been here for 15 minutes, your, your symptoms are not worsening, you're not, you don't have a fever, you can go back to class. So we'll have a structure for how our health clerks work through uh, those kids who come into the office frequently. Okay, that's a very good question. Question, who will be conducting the temperature check? Right now we have a health clerk that works for the school district. We have two school administrators or three depending on the school. So at this point in time, it's those four individuals. No, no and as Thank we you. move closer to the start of school, we may expand that number. So Mr. Ochoa, we, um, another person just wants to thank you. Thank you for your time and your thank patience. You. Thank you, thank you. That's my wife, by the way, so for the school. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Romero. Um, and the, the, another question is um, for attendance. So for, uh, during the, the hybrid program, uh, would there be a start time and a, an amount of time that they need to be logged in during those three days that they're off? Uh, the question um, is asked by a parent that will be, uh, won't be able to be home till yeah. about three o'clock. We'll have a very specific schedule for students when they're distance learning, absolutely. All right, Mr. Romero, two more questions and then the last uh, two, will, the last three or four questions will go into the chat and the FAQ. Hi, Brian. We have a question, will electives be available? In our current plan, we're planning to have elective classes in the upcoming school year. Thank you for that. Okay. Question, will security change in any way? Will greatly limit the number of visitors who come onto our campus mm -hmm. and will greatly restrict access to the campus so that we comply 
with the Stronger Together plan that was developed by the California Excellent. Department of Ed right. and those guidance okay. documents. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Will students be allowed to bring lunch from home? Yes, absolutely. Kids can bring lunch. Another call. I wanted to thank you for setting this up. This has been great. Thank you. And uh, he's, this caller has a student in middle school. Uh, will, will advanced math be uh, available? Our, our plan is to put in place all of our classes. So that's, that's what we have currently in our plan is to have all of our classes available uh, in the program. And will he be uh, staying with the same group if advanced math is available? My, so let's talk about that. So our plan is to greatly reduce the number of kids who move from one class to another. <laughs> But I want to be clear, we will make exceptions. What time is it, Z? When we make those exceptions, we will take every precaution to sanitize rooms, clean rooms, and get the classroom back up and ready and safe and healthy for the next group of kids. Okay. Sounds good. Is that your only question? Yeah. We have a HDLA question. Um, so the Rice program does not have Spanish plan. That's right. Um, how do we ensure so that the student do, does not uh, fall behind? Well, if a, if a child were to go into the Hollister Rice Academy, we would have to acknowledge that that is a, a program that is English only. And so that's one of the reasons why we're having an event like tonight, why we're having this conversation. Um, is to basically give parents information about their options um, to ensure that when they make the decision no, about no, how to proceed with next year, they're going in with all the information that they have. And this is the last call for Mr. Romero, and that's the last what chat message that? too for now. Um, and Mr. Romero, there he is. I want to say thank you to Mrs. Uh, Gwen McKeeran. She's our director of special ed. She's been in the background oh, okay. taking notes, okay. Okay. making, you know, writing questions. And then we have okay. Mrs. Mrs. Mike that. Cruz over here. She's our other coordinator of special ed, and she's done a great job of okay. handing me all the notes, um, the written notes from the, the live chat. And I have, I want to show this. This is a lot of sticky, so I think it, it might be a, a million, but okay. it's a lot. And then Mr. Romero, he's taken like six or seven calls this whole time, so we at least have my million plus his six or seven. So thank you, Mr. Romero. Um, so last question. So a uh, parent is concerned about students who are not following the, the distance yes. um, rules. Uh, will they be in top of We will be very strict about social distancing rules on our campuses. We will absolutely reinforce it, we'll be strict about it, we'll educate kids, we'll support everyone on campus remaining socially distanced. Um, and so that was the last question. This was the last chat question. Thank you, Mr. Romero, for that. Um, I want to close by just make, giving a message to all of our families. Um, what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to partner with us. Keep your questions coming to us. We have a lot of meetings in the next three weeks moving forward. We have tomorrow night a special school board meeting to discuss much of this. We have a task force for school reopening meeting this Friday. All of next week, we'll have meetings with parent groups, meetings with school site council members, meetings with the migrant parents, with our district DLAC. So partner with us, work with us. Talk, you know, send us those messages, follow, follow through with your questions to us. And what we're going to do is we are going to work absolutely as hard as we can to do everything we can to support your child. Um, I know and I understand that there is a lot of disappointment, that there's upset parents about the idea of not having kids in school five days a week. And I want you to know that I understand that. And I want to encourage all of our parents to become active and help us communicate with our legislature. Get out the computer and write those emails to our, our officials in the state of California asking for relief and support because with the current guidelines that we have in place, the current public health requirements that we have in place, 
rotational hybrid attendance two days a week is the only way to keep kids six feet apart. And so I want to end by thanking you all for being on this on this uh, important YouTube Parent Town Hall. We'll have another in two weeks, June 22nd, same time. This Friday, task force meeting next week, meetings with school site councils, parent uh, advisory committee, DLAC, and every single day, this amazing educators and people who work for the Hollister School District are here working as hard as we can to do what's best for students. So just thank you all very much and have a good night. Thank you.